To be able to take the mick out of oneself is a quality that most humans seek in another, in my opinion. I'm not a journalist, I'm not an expert, I'm just a person that has been able to watch plenty of documentaries and more and the royal family as I grew up and how in this sweet moment, right here. Charles and William pre-preparing for the coronation, this monumental event as the king takes over the monarchy. The days and days building up towards in how in practice that little clasp may be a difficult one on the day in how Charles references what we've all seen and heard, meme after meme, those sausage fingers. But how Charles, without playing victim, makes that claim. He, he takes it, he takes it on the chin and makes a joke out of himself and understands what's out there. Awareness, making it comfortable to watch because he's giggling along with it and with us. And by, by taking ownership of it, it makes it comfortable. It makes it easy. People feel comfortable around that because they, they're not scared of what they say or do because he gets it. And he's saying it too. Which takes me back up to David and Victoria Beckham, their documentary in how, how they can take the mick out of oneself too. And this is what David and Victoria do and they have done all this time. This is why they have this rapport, even though they're up there in a head and they have the wealth and the privilege from their hard work. But also this, this David Beckham standing in the queue for the Queen, this, this people's touch, because they can laugh at themselves, they can take the mick, they can be humble and be aware. And that's what shone through in their documentary that we all watched on and see. And it shone a light on Harry and Meghan's documentary in what we didn't see. And what we didn't see was, let's just watch it first work really hard both of our parents work really hard we're very working working class be day. honest I, I am being be honest. honest I am being what honest what did your dr dad drive you to school in so my dad did, no one answer my dad what well, car was it uh, it's not a simple answer what because what car what did you get your dad to drive it depends to school in? no 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 okay what in car? the 80s what? my dad had a Rolls Royce Thank you. And there you have it, the documentary series which shone a light on the awkwardness and the lack of humbleness that Harry and Meghan brought. We got Posh and Bex and her trying to play down the school run in the car her dad drove and Beckham being totally comfortable in calling that BS out and her just taking it on the chin, laughing at herself, which makes us all comfortable to watch because it's real. Nobody's perfect. People, people get it wrong and people be bigger than what they are sometimes, but it's okay also to strike awareness and understand you're stepping out of line and you know, what better husband than to have a joke and be like, come on, come on, be honest, be truthful. And that's what we got with those two opposed to that documentary where Harry and Meghan chose to sit there and sort of giggle about it in a nicey kind of way about how they had not cots and it, was, it wasn't the palace, it was just adjacent to the palace and muted down tones. But as they back up their victim status, not laughing at themselves, and actually this is coming across as a bit of a joke in the fact that you would moan about having so much wealth, so much good, and you're still out there and your target audience being the people that are going through a cost of living crisis, you, you even then come in to back that up with how Oprah received your accommodation that day and how you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, let's just go is, to that. We're living on palace grounds. Kensington Palace sounds very regal. Of course it does. It says palace in the name. But Nottingham Cottage was a small, 
the whole thing's on a slight, a slight lean, <laughs> really low ceiling. So I don't know who was there before. They must have been very short. He would just hit his head constantly in that, <laughs> that place because he's so tall. Oprah came over for tea, didn't she? She did. And when she came in, she sat down, she goes, no one would ever believe it. No one would ever believe it. <laughs> Someone's happy. And there you have it, a few comparisons to how being humble, being aware, being able to laugh at yourself and joke and acknowledge the fact that you, you have got a lot, but it's okay because you're not perfect, because nobody's perfect. And how uncomfortable it is to watch someone who's had it all and got it all, and who will stand there on a stage and continue to claim that victimhood, unable to see the joke in what they're speaking. And it's uncomfortable for people to acknowledge and see as they cash in and really, really are unable to read a room to what the people, their target audience, would like to see.